we have a problem. Well, I'm going to be working on my wife's car again. The AC is not cooling off as it should. It will cool some, but not as it should. It keeps kicking on and off, so I think it is a refrigeration issue. The, the Freon is going low. Um, so, got some tools and we're going to get this going. Before we continue on with this video, I wanted to bring you up today's sponsor, which is you. So, um, as I've said several times on this channel, YouTube does not really pay its content creators. It robs us of views. It uh, finagles the finances around the 21st of each month because that's when they're supposed to pay. So you'll, you'll see um, estimation of saying, oh, it's $100 or $200 we're going to pay you this month. And then next thing you know, it's 20 bucks. So oh, one way that you can support us is the super chat little feature that they have. And like if you donate $5, I get like a dollar. So Google, which owns YouTube, that's another way that they cheat content creators is that they take the lion's share of the money for themselves. And they got a bunch of other features coming out. And pretty much from what I understand, all those other features, they do the same thing. Four for them, one for us. So Patreon gives us an opportunity to engage with our fans that really re want to support the channel. Every day, small channels like mine goes away. And the reason why is that, one, YouTube cheats us. Two, it costs so much and we're not getting enough money. And three, we're just lacking the support we need. So Patreon gives you a chance to support small content creators like myself so that I can continue putting out the content you like. And the way it's set up is that it's a paid monthly subscription. And so you pay Patreon, then Patreon pays me. And I get roughly, from what I understand, anywhere from 80 to 90% of every dollar that you donate to our cause. And so with each paid level, you get different benefits. So I got Friends of Ken, and that is the lowest level. Then I've got the Squatch, the Squatch Squad. And so that's another level, and then I got Mega Patrons. And so each one has a certain benefit that I think is worth the level of money that you're paying out. And so it is a way that you can help me to shape this channel, for you to support this channel, to provide things that I need monetarily to keep things going. And basically, if this does not work, this channel may be going away. So I need your help. And this is a way that you can help. Um, so please go to my Patreon channel and uh, link it is in the description as well. And on to the video. Here's the Equinox, and uh, before we do anything, I need to show you what we'll be using for tools. All right, so tool-wise, you're going to need some um, things. First of all, if you go Tractor Supply, they're about the cheapest I've found for this R134A refrigerant. So I got two cans, and Usually the, the pros tell you to evacuate your system. You didn't got to do that. That is the best. And if you if you do this and you want to evacuate your system, you'll need a um, a high pressure valve so you can pull that out, get a pump, vacuum pump, and pump it out, but that's really not needed. So um, I'm I'm just gonna do it a very easy way. The, this device here, Harbor Freight does not carry it. I could not find one at Tractor Supply. Walmart had it listed on their website, but if you looked, it was from somebody else being a private seller, kind of like Amazon. So, yeah, the only place I found this really was AutoZone. So, if, if you need to 
get one of these and you can't find anybody carrying it in town which is pretty common nowadays see stores not carrying what you need you can buy these off of amazon super cheap autozone they did a little bit of price gouging so this one right here was running about 25 bucks just this device uh walmart it on their uh with their private sellers running about nine to thirteen dollars and i've seen similar uh styles on amazon probably the same seller because if you sell on walmart you probably sell on amazon too and you're probably making more sales from amazon but anyway what we're going to do is I, i'm going to show you the next steps and we'll just kind of go through this one step at a time one of the first things you need to do is make sure that the car is in some shade and that you have opened up the doors. I'm going to open up back doors as well, and then I'll show you next step. All right, so in Equinoxes, Chevy does something stupid. They do not put a high and a low marker on their caps. So these caps have nothing to show if it's high or low. You've got to instead know how this works, and so big hose right here that's low this right here the small hose this is high you always want to deal with low so i'm going to take this cap off now other brands they will have caps that are different colored and a lot of times those different colored caps, uh, yellow and green, yellow and blue, different colors. Sometimes it'd be same color, but we'll have a L and a H. Uh, like I said, you will not see anything like that. They have the same cap, uh, mice type. You can't really read that well. Uh, so Chevy, you've done a wonderful job of screwing things up yet again. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get this hooked up with my machine. Now when you do this, either right at the top of the hood or at the bottom, it will tell you what you're supposed to use. So this one right here says R134A, and then it tells you to only use R34A, and then it tells you how much the system will hold. In this case, it is 0.65 kilograms or 1.3 pounds. Uh, this right here, this refrigerant 341 grams or 12 ounces so it's not even a pound so it may take two cans and you may have leftovers uh, that's fine so but you need to know that I've already taken the cap off here now you got two sides on this machine this will go this one with a little valve here will go to your Freon this right here goes right there and uh, the way it works if you look when you press down that valve you can pull this little slide up and then it'll lock into place so let me go ahead and do that right now and, uh, and also make sure you don't have any type of debris or anything so wipe that clean which I did and I didn't let's see Ooh. That's not good. Let's turn this on and leave it on for about five minutes. Before I do that, I do want to make sure that I got this pin screwed to where it's not going to be jumping into the can. So I'm back out of that screw as much as I can because I don't want it to go forward. I'm gonna show you how it goes forward real quick. I did, so I had it going forward, now I'm going backwards. All right, so now that, that should not puncture this, I'm gonna screw this in real quick. All right, I made a rookie mistake. Uh, I, was, I thought they had sold me one for the right Freon. This is not for the right Freon, so the gas and all that will not go on it. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this right here is an ultralight. As I said before, we have a private airstrip along with several military bases. 
I believe this this one is part of the ultralight blue angels it's a rescue group um, they do search and rescues and things of that nature a uh, good group uh, so that's kind of neat seeing ultralight all right so one of the things um, that I wanted to talk about is I had to return this and all they had was um, these little digital or they had a digital model and one of these with a gauge meant to be all in one um, but this was just a replacement gauge this will work somewhat but uh, yeah it's not as good as the others but it, it is usable okay can is screwed in same as before we got this little valve that will move up and down connect over here so we'll do that next so i'll just put this right here because it needs to be out of the way and ah crap gotta love this stuff trying to do one-handed all right so there we go and this one you just press down and it'll gauge which is even better all right so i'm going to put this right here all right and then i'm gonna see right now it's in the red saying see instructions there are no instructions so i'm gonna see what happens i'm gonna turn this on first So you can see now where where it has went from red all the way to needing freon and it's low uh, as i said before you could hook up a vacuum hose um, they make vacuums that uh you can buy them from tractor supply i think autozone will even lend you one and you suck it out and then you just weigh the cans and as you weigh the cans you put in the appropriate amount of weight which I want to say is around 444 grams is what this um, requires. Actually, I lied. It is 0 0.65 kilograms, so 650 grams, or 1.43 pounds. I'm going to let this run for about five minutes, and then I'm going to start squirting. What you do is you just want to make sure you have the can kind of shook up. And then you start squirting so i'll be back in just a minute never leave this like this stay with the car the whole time until you're done okay it's been about five minutes there's a trigger you just pull that you can hear it going and every once in a while just shake it up a little bit and continue on and as you'll feel it getting significantly colder on your hands so i'll come back in a little bit with some uh, when we get this filled in as you can see it's going down so i'm still having to add more uh but when you shake it and squirt it it'll say like 40 or something and then it goes down so we got a lot to put in here all right as you can see here it is overcharged it's staying in that line so what i'm going to do is i'm going to unscrew this can do something stupid uh i've got some glasses on if this gets in your eyes you can go blind uh, you should be wearing protective gloves. I'm not going to do that per se because it's got a little trigger. I'm going to keep my hands away from it so it shouldn't burn my hands. And I'm going to try to bleed off a little bit, a little at a time. I'm going to point this away from me and then I'm going to press the trigger and see how it goes.
if you're wondering why um, when it gets around 45 or so um, why I'm not uh, I keep going I won't go down lower well that's for a good reason this can still be a little bit overcharged you want to be closer to the low than you do the um, the full I'm trying to get to about 35 psi okay so she is vacillating between about 35 and 40 I'm saying that's probably about as good pressure as I'm gonna get out of her the air is blowing cool if you overcharge these immediately bleed it out and you need to have something with a gauge now I did something stupid that I was warned that you can do but you could overfill it very easily and I, I did I thought I had enough refrigerant in there that it wouldn't be too much and I wouldn't overcharge so what I did is I turned my can upside down don't do that don't be stupid that's what happened well it's actually been a few weeks since that repair the AC is running perfectly um, the wife seems happy with it it has worked remember I'm not I'm not a mechanic I am just a normal guy I make mistakes I include my mistakes in my videos because these are not necessarily how to's but how I do videos so you get to see all my mistakes so that you don't make them uh, you can learn from them I tell you what I know I'm doing wrong I tell you when I'm doing something stupid so that you don't do it um, now go ahead and do the stupid thing anyway because it's the best choice for me at the time sometimes that is the way life is uh, but I hope you like this video please give it a thumbs up uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed share this video with others especially if you think they get a little laugh out of my stupidity uh, that that one piece that I had change out yeah that was stupid I should have been paying more attention, but they had it right there with the automotive stuff, and there was nothing else that would require that. So I thought it was kind of weird that AutoZone had that. Um, it was really crazy. But anyway, uh, don't forget the Patreon thing. That's important. And I'll see you again next time. Bye. <laughs>